let us continue. At the previous lecture, we have proved the following fact that if we have th uh, three complexes and two maps of complexes, F and G, morphisms of complexes such that for each i the sequence u i v i w i is short exact Then, uh, for each i, there exists a map delta from h i w to h minus one of u, <coughs> such that. We have <coughs> um, such that one has a long exact sequence. W delta H of U here H N of F H N of V H N of G. I usually don't write the brackets without brackets. <coughs> then H W and then delta H and minus one of U and so on. Uh, moreover, if we have another triple of complexes and another pair of morphisms of complexes like U dot prime prime, v dot prime, prime, w prime. And we have morphisms of complexes. Uh, let us call them, for example, h u, h v, h w, such that this squares commute. So everything is morphism of complexes, <coughs> h square from u. Then we have here another long exact sequence, yes. B delta prime h m u prime h m f prime h m v prime h m g. H N W prime prime H N minus one U prime uh, and of course of course if we write here H N H U here H N H V here H N H W then uh, these squares will commute yes be simply because H N is a functor um, but moreover this square will commute if you write here H N H U
in other words, uh, people say that delta is uh, natural. <coughs> well, uh, to prove that the square commutes, you can simply use the definition of delta and see that uh, going this way and this way, you get the same thing. So this, this is. So now we will apply this to prove uh, Cunis formulas. Uh, and in particular, this uh, naturality, we will need to prove that the Kunth short exact sequence splits. So first, we will construct these exact sequences. Um, so the first Kunth formula for homology. Cunin form of homology says the following thing. Let u dot v dot be complexes or complexes uh, this uh, one is of left modules. And this one of right modules. <coughs> Suppose that and d of ui are flat for all i. Get this all that we need. Yes. Then there exists a natural short exact sequence. So in the middle we have Hn of u over v. Here we have the direct sum for i plus j plus m h i of u tensor over uh, hj of v. And here we have direct sum for i plus j equals n minus 1. Yes. Tor 1r from h i of u. Well, uh, naturality uh, this usually means that if you have uh, two and other uh, complexes u prime and v prime such that u prime satisfies uh, all the required conditions, yes. Um, that u prime i and d of u prime i are flat, uh, then um, uh, 
when you can write another short exact sequence, yes. And if you have morphisms of complexes, f from u to u prime and g from v to v prime morphisms of complexes, then this diagram commutes here to its sum for i plus j plus n h i of f tensor h j of g here h n of f tensor g I don't remember if I say or no but uh, if you have uh, like two complexes here, two complexes here, you have a from this complex to this, from this to this, uh, then you can define uh, a map of complexes f and g, which uh, simply acts on on u tensor v as uh, f tensor g of u tensor v equals to f of u tensor g of u, uh, g of v. Sorry. Um, and here. Tor one R H I of F H G. Uh, well, uh, as before, uh, the neutrality we will not prove. It will be this exercise. It follows from the um, neutrality of this delta because we will use it. Um, this delta. So we'll prove <coughs> the first part that there exists uh, an exact sequence. So first of all, uh, we denote um, that we have sequence here: yes. u i, u i minus one, minus two, and so on. Here plus one. And here we have di, di minus 1, and so on. And by, uh, by zi, we will denote the kernel of di minus 1. E by bi, we will denote the image of di. Yes. Then bi lies in zi. It, it simply means that uh, u is a chain complex. And we know that ui, bi are flat for any i. Well, on the other hand, we have a short exact sequence. Here, okay. so on, so on, yes. this one. Since No. 
that i ui b minus one is a short exact sequence. That i is flat for an i. We have studied this at seminars that if these two modules are flat and the third one is flat. It follows from the fact that flatness can be tested by the first tor. So if the first tor of this and this is zero, then uh, well, flatness is equal to the fact that all tors are zero. So if all tors uh, of x with ui and bi minus one is zero, then when we write the long exact sequence, we have zero, zero, then tor one of zi, i, zero, zero, tor two of zi, i, and so on. And so all tors, uh, tor one of zi i and some x, of course, um, and so on. So all tors are zero. So that i is flat for any i. And what? Um, ah. Uh, and now we will consider the following uh, sequence of complexes. Let's consider. complexes that dot b dot where with zero differential so the dot is a complex uh, whose ith uh, term is zi, and is the, the differential is zero. B dot is the complex whose ith term is bi, and the differential is zero. Um, then there are morphisms of complexes. Hmm? Why is uh, bi flat? Why what? Bi flat? Yep. Because bi is the same thing as d of ui. Uh, okay. That i Z dot, U dot, B dot. Mm. Oh, sorry, B dot. Um. So we have a map from shifted by minus one, I think. Yes, uh, I has to be. Mm -hmm. So we have a map from ui to bi minus one, yes. Well, that i ui b shifted by minus one i, which is bi minus one. is a short exact sequence for any i. Yes, uh, this map is a morphism of complexes because um, to be morphism of complexes, uh, this composition has to be zero. Yes. Like ui bi minus one, minus one, 
b i minus 2. This composition has to be zero, but it exactly means that u is a chain complex. And here, now obviously, the composition is zero because uh, that is, by definition, the kernel of, of, d, of, of the differential of u. Uh, now, <coughs> let us uh, multiply. Oh, let us denote this by iota dot, this by p dot. Yes. Uh, we can multiply this sequence of uh, morphisms of complexes by the complex V now. Yes, so we will get. A sequence that you no, sorry, that tensor or uh, V here we have I Yota tensor IGV. U as our uh, V here B as our R V yes and here B as our D, V yes uh, these maps are again morphisms complexes and if you consider them in in degree I in degree n, for example, then uh, what's this? It's um, here. It's the direct sum for i plus j equals n z i tensor over uh, v i uh, v j here direct sum for i plus j equals n u. Uh, Minus one U I tensor over R V J and here <coughs> direct sum for I plus J equals minus one B I minus one tensor over R V J here we have direct sum Yota um, I tensor one VJ and here direct sum P I tensor one VJ. So it is a direct sum of sequences that I Of Vj, and then Ui tensor Vj, and then B i minus one tensor Vj, this sequence is short exact. J since B I minus one is flat. Yes, since uh, B I minus one is flat, when we apply uh, the tensor product with VJ, uh, here we always have epicim. Um, uh, uh, yes, here we always have exactness. Then we have this, and th then we have tor of bi minus one and vj, and this tor is zero. So this sequence is exact for any, for all i and j, and then the direct sum is exact too. So this sequence is exact.
Then Bauer lemma that I have uh, deleted just now. What uh, this one? Yes. Because it is a direct sum of exact sequences. And by a small one is exact. Because the sequence that i u i b i minus one was exact. Yes. And we tensor it by v j, but b i minus one is flat. Mm -hmm. Then when we tensor, we get a long exact sequence. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it starts like this, 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 and then. Tor one uh, over R will be I minus one and Vj, yes, mm -hmm. and then something else. But this one is zero because B I minus one is flat. So by our lemma, we have uh, a long exact sequence. V. Yes, here we have H N of Z tensor V. Some delta. H N plus one. B shifted by minus one tensor V. Okay. H M plus one of B shifted by minus one tensor V. Here, H n of B shifted by minus one times R V. Everywhere R, of course. All tensors are R. Uh, if I, well, during this proof, if I forget somewhere, put R, uh, it is R. Yes. Um, then delta. Here H n minus one of H yes n minus one of Z tensor V. Yes. So here we have what we need. Yes, you know the existence of this. Exact sequence. Yes. Um, so, if we put here a co-kernel of a delta, and here we put the kernel of a delta, then we will get. Uh, short exact sequence, and so we need to understand what is the co-kernel and kernel of delta. So we need to understand what is delta. Um, well, uh, when we had the sequence z u b by minus one. Uh, what was delta? We had ui, bi minus 1, zi, ui minus 1, zi plus 1, yes. So delta is some map from here to here. How, how it works? It takes some element here, 
then take some pre-image of it, then you apply this map, and the result here doesn't depend on the pre-image because uh, the pre-image is uh, well-defined module zi, and zi is the kernel of this map. Uh, so we have some pre-image, it goes here, and what's this? It's simply, we take uh, the element in the image, which is uh, submodule here, and uh, include it to its place, yes? So we had ui, ui minus one, here we had di minus one, which is image of this map, d, yes. And we take element here, we take some pre-image here, and apply di minus one. So we simply obtain uh, uh, obtain um, the same element because bi minus one, in fact, is a submodule of this. Yes. Uh, and then. This image lies in zi plus one, because u is a chain complex, and we take this element in zi plus one. Uh, sorry. Uh, zi minus one. So here, zi minus one. So it's simply this map. This map that comes from the. Um, from the fact that zi minus one, bi minus one are submodules of ui minus one and bi minus one lies in zi minus one. It's clear, yes? Yes, yes, at, at this stage. Okay. Well, uh, and when we tensor it by some v, yes, then, uh, we get the same thing, like uh, when we have z u b by minus one turns out by v. Yes, and. We take here some element uh, of the form from B i tensor, B i minus one tensor with J. Yes, how we obtain an element in, in uh, the direct sum uh, of uh, sorry. Let be, for example, here, v k minus one, tensor v n minus k, and here direct sum of uh, z i tensor v j for i plus j equals to n minus one. Yes, uh, how we obtain? We simply goes there, go there, and to do this, we simply can uh, do this using b k minus one. Yes. You go there, here, and here. And so uh, this map that we, this delta, yes, is simply uh, simply uh, acts like, uh, like um, this inclusion tensor V, T tensor HN of V, some like sense, yes. It is because uh, if we uh, consider uh, sorry, um, here 
some, something that is probably not clear. The point is, uh, that is not clear is why we take here an element of this, yes, why we don't take uh, a sum of such elements. But if we consider this complex, yes, b dot shifted by minus 1 tensor v dot. Then it is simply a direct sum of complexes B sorry B I minus one tensor V dot shifted by Shifted by four, sorry, um, minus I, I think, or by I. We uh, so, uh, dot. Uh, So B I minus one tensor V dot uh, if we want to take the shifted by minus I, if you want to take the component J, yes it is uh, B I minus one tensor V J minus I, uh, yes. So this complex is a direct sum of complexes, and if we want to consider homology, we can consider um, separately the direct. Uh, like, uh, if element uh, lies uh, gives um, lies in the kernel, then it is a direct sum of elements each of which lie in the kernel, uh, lie in, in this complex, in, in some concrete complex. Yes. Do you understand what I say or not? Like, the question is why we can uh, define map delta, the map delta only on uh, elements of such modules. Because if uh, there is some element that goes to zero, yes, then it is a direct sum, uh, it, it is sum of elements each of whom lie in such a module, and uh, each of these elements has to go to zero separately, because uh, they uh, have images in different modules. And uh, at such a, a module, we can uh, apply the same construction as here and see that delta is simply uh, the map induced by uh, induced by what by why by the inclusion of b shifted by minus one to z tensor IGV. Yes. Well, in fact, I forgot to mention some detail. So in this form, it's not very clear. Um, um, 
here, yes? We have that B by minus one tends R V, as I told, is a weird sum of B I minus one tends R V shifted by minus I, yes. And if you take uh, the homology, yes, then it's simply Simply direct sum of, uh, of homologies, yes. For um, for all i from z. Yes, but this module is flat. So we can put it uh, outside. We have studied this, yes? If, if you have a flat module, if M is flat, then H n of m tensor C is the same thing as m tensor H n of C. Yes, because, <coughs> uh, because uh, homology of C can be expressed in, the terms of, in terms of uh, short exact sequences. All the sequences we multiply by m. Yes, and they still uh, are short exact sequences, and so we have this result. Uh, then here we have uh, what we have, direct sum for i from z, b i minus one, then the h n of we shifted by minus i. It is simply h n minus i of v. Yes. So, in other words, we have that H n of B, uh, B by minus one tensor V is the same thing as direct sum for I plus J equals to n minus one. So we replace i minus y by i, so here we have n minus 1. B i tensor h j of v. And analogously, h n of z i tensor r r v is the direct sum for i plus j equals m uh, b z i tensor over a h j of v. Yes, it's the same thing because uh, that i is flat to and the map delta is from 
the root sum for i plus j equals n because it is from uh, hn plus 1, yes. b i tensor over r h j v to the direct sum for i plus j equals n that i tensor over r h j of v and it is simply the direct sum for i plus j equals n the inclusion of bi to zi tensor over r id hj of v yes and we want to understand the kernel and the co-kernel of delta so If you take the inclusion yes. then the co kernel of this inclusion is exactly H I of U yes. by definition because uh, these guys are cycles boundaries or cycles factor boundaries homology and then this part is a flat resolution and probably we don't need this okay uh, we don't need this so let us multiply this uh, short exact sequence by hj of v Yes, what we get? We get h i of u tensor h j of v, then z i tensor h j of v. Here as we have seen is delta restricted to bi tensor hj of v yes and here we have tor one r from hi of u to hj of v And here we have zero because that i is flat. Formally, there is uh, here we have tor one from between that i and hj of v, but that i is flat, so it's zero. And taking the real sum of the sequences. We get the following. Where are we get this? Let's get it here in the bottom. sum for i plus j equals n b i h j of v here we have delta then we have direct sum for i plus j equals n z i tensor power r 
HFV. Here we have Dirichsen for I plus J equals N tor 1 R I of U H of V. And here direct sum for I plus J plus <coughs> M H I of U tensor H of V. So this guy is the co kernel of delta, and this guy is the kernel of delta. Uh, and uh, well, uh, of the corresponding delta, yes, here we need delta between uh, the same sums, but, but for n minus 1. So we have kernel delta and co kernel delta as we wanted. Well, and to prove um, the naturality of this um, short exact sequence, we of course need to take uh, another v prime, u prime, then we see that uh, the map from V to V prime uh, induces a map between sequences of complexes. And from the naturality of delta, we have sequences here, and uh, they are restricted to the kernel and co-kernel. So the construction of this long exact sequence is natural because of naturality of delta. And so the short exact sequence is natural too. So now another form of Kuhn's formula. Well, uh, formulated, we need some definition. And in fact, we will repeat the proof. some changes. Well, first definition. Suppose that now that U and V are right or complexes. Then we can define the complex home R U V. Uh, what's the, uh, sorry. Yes, um, what's this? By definition, <coughs> by definition, <coughs> home R U V is the direct product, uh, sorry, home R U V N is the direct product uh, for I from Z, home R U I V I plus N. Or to be more similar to the tensor product complex. Here we can put J, and here we have 
in this case, uh, j minus y equals n. Yes. And if we have um, some element here, yes. Delta home r u dot v dot. Um, M, yes, applied to the set of maps uh, F I from ui to v i plus n yes. it is by definition oh, sorry. Uh, a set of the following methods f i minus 1 d u i minus 1 if you need indices plus minus 1 in the n plus 1th power d v i minus 1 f i uh, sorry uh, not i minus 1 what n plus i plus n minus 1 and it is a map from u i to v i plus n minus 1 yes So, for example, if uh, we simply module, then uh, we have the complex home R U V that we have defined before. Yes, simply the application of the functor home R uh, branch V to the complex U. And uh, one can show that. It is really complex. And uh, this sign is needed to have uh, the composition zero. Because, of course, when we, we apply two times this, we, we will get the composition uh, of di minus 1 and di, the composition of uh, dv and dv, and the composition of uh, du and dv in the same order, but with different signs, and they, then they cancel. Home R U V 
couple of hours. So. And the Cunis theorem for homology says how to Cunis theorem of formula for cohomology. Says thus how one can compute the homology of home complex we will not need it a lot we will need this in fact only for the case where v is a module but we will write the general form uh, so let uv be complexes such that ui and d of ui are projective then there exists long exact sequence uh, short exact sequence Direct product of X one R for I from Z H I of U H uh, I plus N plus one of V. Sorry, I will write it a little by diagonal HN home R U V and here the direct product for I from Z H I of U home our R from H I U to H I plus N of U. Um, and of course the proof is uh, very similar. Try to be uh, not very slow, so it will be a sketch of proof, but probably a proof. So it's the same as in the <coughs> homology case. We take again Z U B by minus one is a is what a, is a sequence of complexes of complexes such that in each Degree we have short exact sequence um, and moreover since B and U uh, are projective I 
and UI are projective for all i. The sequence that i ui b i minus one splits and ui that i is projective. Well, so we can apply we can apply home or a slash v to this sequence of complexes. And get home over uh, Z <coughs> V <coughs> home over uh, V home over A. Uh, B shifted by minus one. V. Mm, sorry. Um, in the opposite direction, of course. Yes, here Z V. Here <coughs> home. Uh, One, three. Uh, so <coughs> uh, this uh, and uh, the, uh, this sequence is again a sequence of two morphisms of complexes, and since uh, <coughs> it is again. Uh, now, no, not a direct uh, sum, but a direct product of uh, short exact sequences, then <coughs> in each degree it is a short exact sequence. To, to the homological case. Degree, we have a short exact sequence. The only difference is that. Before it was a direct sum of short exact sequences, and here it is a direct product. Since the direct product of short exact sequences is a short exact sequence. Well, and we again can 
write down the <coughs> the long exact sequence corresponding to this sequence of complexes. Now we note that form our R B shifted by minus one to V is in fact the direct product uh, for I from Z home R B I V shifted by minus I minus one and home R Z V is the direct product for I plus Z home R Z I V uh, shift by minus I yes. <coughs> uh, because uh, B is simply direct sum of modules, yes, and if we apply home uh, to, and we have direct sum in the first component when we take the direct sum off, it becomes a direct product. Yes. <coughs> this is the reason why uh, in the definition of uh, in the definition of home complex, we take direct product instead of direct sum. Well, in fact, usually it's not important because uh, all sums are finite in applications. So we again have sh a long exact sequence and in the middle we have home our R from U to V. Then we have, <coughs> uh, then we have, what do we have? Then we have direct, uh, uh, chain, sorry. Then we have direct sum. Uh, have of H, uh, HN with some home our R, uh, direct product, sorry, home our R from ZI to V shifted by minus I. Yes, and since <coughs> that I is projective, then uh, the functor, uh, well, first of all, it is the product of HN home of R uh, that I V by my psi, yes. And since, <coughs> since that I is um, that I is projective, uh, then uh, when we apply home our R from that I to something, it is a, an exact functor. So we can put HM here. So it is home our R uh, from that I to H and plus I V. So, 
Yes. And analogously, we have with another, with other terms, so we have HM home R U V to the direct product H M home uh, sorry, home R Z I H M plus I V and then we have direct product home over a b i h n plus i of v and here the same thing we have direct product home over a b <coughs> i h n plus i plus one of v and here direct product home over a that i h n plus i plus one of v uh, and again this map is simply home uh, direct product of the maps home over a the inclusion of bi zi and h m plus i of v. Yes. So when we apply to this inclusion home over a uh, dash uh, h m plus i of v, uh, the arrow changes the direction. Yes, so we have from here to here. And now Again, we look at the short exact sequence. Yes. As we considered before, which is <coughs> BI. That I and H <coughs> I of U, and we apply to it home our R slash H N plus I plus one of V. And since uh, this and this modules are projective, we get <coughs> the exact sequence home our R. I of u, uh, h n plus i plus 1 of v. Home over r uh, z i. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Uh, direction is the opposite, so home our r uh, z i h i plus n plus one of v, then home our r uh, b i h n plus i plus one of v, and here text our r from h i of u to h n plus i plus 1 of v. Mm, sorry. Uh, oh, okay. You could apply HM plus I, but, but okay. So, and here zero because uh, here has to be 
x over r, the first x over r from that i to h uh, is from di. Yes. Sorry, from that i to h, but that i is projective. Uh, and now it remains. Take the direct product of this is like sequences. Kernel uh, of uh, delta and the co kernel of delta are as we want. And of course, the sequence the short exact sequence. Well, here, um, of course, if uh, we have some from U to U, sorry, uh, uh, no, from U prime to U, and the map from uh, from uh, V to V prime, yes. Then uh, and we write down here the short exact sequence for U and V. Here the short exact sequence for U prime and V prime. And here we have home our R F. G. Here we have. What do we have? Um, yeah, so we can. Here we have home over R H I of F. H i plus n g. Yes, and here we have uh, the direct sum of x over r1 from h i f h i plus n plus 1 g. Then this squares commute.
and it again follows from the naturality of delta. Well, our next aim is to prove that in some <coughs> reasonable cases, both of the Cunard formulas split. And uh, in fact, we have uh, a direct sum decomposition of, uh, of the homology of tensor product or uh, home complex is the uh, is one part and another part that is expressed on in the terms of homology of original complexes so uh, let us give a definition r is called hereditary if Uh, if um, any submodule of a projective module is projective, uh, well, and in the terms of what we have studied at uh, our seminars it is equivalent to say that GL, the global dimension of R, is less or equal to 1. For example, um, uh, the ring of integer numbers is hereditary, yes, and any uh, integral domain is hereditary. So, um, our next aim is to prove that if R is hereditary, then <laughs> short exact sequences formulas split so if r is hereditary and we have u and v that satisfy uh, the conditions that we need for unit formulas then the unit formula that we obtain is split <coughs> in fact uh, if you have u and v such that uh, okay. it's not very easy to formulate in another way uh, so to prove this we will need what I will call Dolt's lemma, and uh, we will prove this lemma and then finish our lecture. So, what is Dolt's lemma? Let R. Eh? Dolt. G. Let R be hereditary. <coughs> and U be an R complex. Then 
there exists there exist ti which is equal to pi i 1 pi i 0 if pi i 0 pi i 1 projective for any i Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, quasi isomorphism f from the real sum of ti shifted by i to So, Dolch Lema says that um, there is a quasi isomorphism between, from some complex to U, where some complex has a very special form. It is a direct sum of complex of this form, where here it's inclusion, yes, and both of them are projective. Uh, so, uh, to prove this, we simply take some concrete place, ui, ui plus 1, take the cycles and boundaries, and the homology, which I, yes. <coughs> and we take uh, pi zero, which is some projective model uh, from which there is epimorphism from to that i. And then we take pi i one and pi i zero, which is simply the preimage of bi. Yes. And uh, then we have a map from pi i one to bi, which is again surjective, yes, because this map is surjective, so will be i lies in the image, and if you take pre-image, you get a surjective map. And uh, we can lift this map. To a map from p1i to ui plus 1. And here we have simply composition. So uh, this map from from p one i p zero i to u induce isomorphism from from a zero one i p zero i to h i u and uh, if <coughs> for each i we do the same procedure and take the direct sum we get the desired result. Uh, 
remains to uh, do this for, for i and to take the direction. Well, and uh, the fact that uh, this induces uh, isomorphism that is size, it's not very difficult. So to uh, prove this, you need to prove that uh, the factor model of this by this is simply uh, HI. It's not very difficult to prove. So let us finish here. And uh, the next time we apply this lemma, we will prove that uh, the cumulative sequence splits. And it's clear how, yes, we simply first will consider such, module, uh, such complexes. And for them, it will split because um, because in each degree, uh, this um, short exact sequence is in fact a uh, sequence containing only two terms, so, uh, so it splits. So, so it's a sequence where one of terms is zero. Uh, and uh, when we take uh, the lyric sum, we, we still have splitness, and then we simply, using neutrality of uh, sequence, will replace any two complexes by complex of this form. But we will see that it's, uh, it's, it's a plan for, of the proof for the next time.